Have you heard the strange tales of the Whistler? I'm the Whistler. Don't. Not again, please. I can scarcely think now. I won't be able to think at all if you do it again. Please, I couldn't stand it. There just won't be anything left if you do. Please. Another Saturday night, and again, CBS presents The Whistler. I, The Whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales. Many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so I tell you tonight, the weird story of Shadow of a Mind. See that man working there in his laboratory? That's Dr. William Richter. He's brilliant. He works hard at his research because he believes he can do more for posterity through research than he could had he continued his regular practice as a surgeon, a brain surgeon. It's good that a doctor can retire from his practice and have a laboratory all his own, with all expenses paid where he may carry on his experiments. Good also that he can afford an assistant. Ernest? Ernest? Yes, doctor. Come here, will you? Think there's something here you should see? Certainly, doctor. Yes, doctor? What is it? This piece of tissue. I've just taken it out of the solution. Oh, yes, that's the tissue from the monkey's brain. Yes, Seems to be alive still. Yes, the solution has kept it in perfect condition, at least to all outward appearances. Uh, of course, we can't really tell until it's tried along with undisturbed tissue. That's right. That's just what we're going to do. Today? You're going to try it today? Yes. Remember the little chimpanzee we brought in last week? Yes. Prepare him, will you? We'll try the experiment at once. Oh, it will be wonderful if it works. Wonderful for humanity, I mean. Well, that's why I'm doing this work, Ernest. Because of the great benefit it will be to mankind if I can find a way to keep tissue living when completely severed from a body. And then replace it. That will be wonderful. I don't mind telling you, Ernest, that if this experiment is successful, we will have gone a long way toward proving the feasibility of tissue transplantation. Then there will remain only to try it with larger sections of tissue. <laughs> Who knows? Perhaps sometime due to our experiments, man will be able to perform this operation on complete sections of the human brain. It's a great work you're doing, Doctor. Yes. Now, prepare the animal, will you? Yes, Doctor. Yes, a great work, Doctor. Such a benefit to mankind. And such a benefit to you if it's a success and to those whom you love. Come in. Oh, Elaine. <laughs> Hello, I'm glad to see you. Oh, I didn't want to disturb you, Father, but I have wonderful news. Terribly important Wait news. a minute. Don't you think you should give me an opportunity to at least say good afternoon to your young man? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Father. Uh, how do you do, sir? <laughs> Hello, John. And now, Elaine, what is this news that is so vital? Well, it's about John and me. That's why I brought John along. We're going to be married. We, we came to ask your permission, sir. You, you are in love? Oh, yes, Father. Very much, sir. Oh, at least that's what you think now. <laughs> but, but, Father... Oh, I know, I know. Love hits you hard when you're young. I just want you to be sure, my dear. You see, this comes as rather a surprise to me. A surprise? Yes, a surprise and, I might say, a slight disappointment. Disappointment? Yes, I'd hoped you'd finish your school and then come here to help me. Oh, I know how you feel about your work, Father. I know how important it is to you. It's important to me, too. I want you to continue it, but... Well, I don't want to give up love simply to assist you. Don't you see? It's your work, not mine. Marriage is what I want. Yes. How soon do you wish to marry? As soon as possible, sir. Then I can only tell you that I advise strongly against it. As you know, Elaine, I cannot order you not to marry this man. No, Father, you've been wonderful to me. I want to repay your kindness. And I think I can do so better if I'm leading a happy, normal life. I hope you're right, Elaine. I can still only advise against this marriage. If you do it, you will do so against my will and judgment. The specimen is ready, Doctor. Huh? Oh, oh, thank you, Ernest. 
So now, if you'll excuse me, I'm in the midst of a rather important experiment. Just a moment, Father. If there's something about John to which you object, I, I think it's only fair that you should tell us now. Oh, my objection has nothing to do with John. I admire him. I've always considered him a brilliant young man. Oh, thank you, sir. If I wished you to marry anyone at this time, I should assume it were John as anyone else. Then why? What is it, Father? It is simply my wish that you do not marry at this time. You see, my dear, I'm not young, and the thought of losing you perhaps makes me slightly selfish about you. I only ask that you consider my request. I do not demand that you obey it. Oh, I'm talking too much. I, I must go. Think it over. Carefully. Oh, I'm sorry, Johnny. I had no idea he'd behave this way about it. I thought he'd be glad. He's always been so nice to me. I thought, of course, he'd be happy to see me married. Well, he didn't seem much concerned over your happiness. He seemed more interested in the effect your marriage was going to have on him or his works. But if I were happy, you'd think he would be. I don't see how marrying you could have any adverse effect on him. I wonder... Several days have passed during which John has thought about it. Wondered why the doctor doesn't want his daughter to marry. Thought and searched for a reason. And he's found that reason. But he hasn't told Elaine. Not until he has another talk with the doctor privately. John and Elaine are driving along the twisting highway to her home. Why on earth did your father ever have his laboratory in such an out-of-the-way place? Oh, he works a lot with animals. They might disturb people if he had close neighbors. Yes, I suppose so. <laughs> Looks as though he might have picked a straighter road. Johnny, why are you so certain that you can convince Father our marriage is the right thing? Well, the only reason he objected was because of what it might do to him. I know what that was. And I can assure him that the result of our marriage won't be what he feared. But why won't you tell me? Oh, <laughs> now, darling, don't you worry about that. Yeah. Give me a kiss. Oh, Johnny, I... Johnny, look out! The bridge! Look out! We're going over! You are careless, John. You needn't have had that wreck if you'd been watching. Even in your haste to settle things with the doctor, you should have been more careful. More careful with the life of the woman you loved. Now her father works feverishly trying to bring her to. Will she? Quiet. Looks pretty bad. I'm afraid it's a concussion. Yes, but will she? I suppose you are satisfied now. I should have forbidden her seeing you rather than suggesting it would be better for her not to marry you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry. I wouldn't have had her hurt for the world. And why did you insist on going out? I love her. Oh. I do love her. And I hope she loves me. And if she's still willing, I'm going to marry her just as soon as she's able. Well... Looks as though it would be some time before she's even able to discuss such a matter. But she will be all right, won't she? I mean later. You'll do all you can now, won't you? She is my daughter. I shall do anything in my power to help her. However, I shall undertake it because I want her to get well, not because you do. Oh, I know how you feel about me. I came here to tell you that our marriage would make no difference in your plans. But that's not important now. The only thing of importance is her recovery. I want you to know if there's anything I can do... You can count on me. Uh, what you can do probably will not be much. However, we shall see. Not much you could do, John. If you'd only realized then just how much you would do, maybe you wouldn't have been so anxious. It hasn't been pleasant, though, has it, all these days of waiting, waiting while Elaine came out of her coma and then lapsed back in again. And when the doctor operated on her, that was hard on you, too. These short visits you've been allowed with her. Does it seem strange that the doctor won't let you stay too long in the room with her? You will have to leave now, John. Remember, I told you you could only have a few minutes. Oh, yes, all right. I'll, I'll come again soon, Elaine. And don't you worry. Everything will be all right. Goodbye, John. I hope you can come again soon. What do you mean everything would be all right? Oh, just about us. Well, what does he know about it? What does he know about your condition? He thinks, as I do, that I'll soon be well. Oh, does he? Yes. Won't I? We shall see. What else did he tell you? That he loved me enough to give up anything in the world for me. Are you still as much in love with him as you were? Oh, yes, Father. More so. Then I want you to tell him that you will marry him. Oh, Father, you... Oh, Father, I knew you'd see. 
I knew you'd want me to be happy. I knew you'd see what was best. Yes, yes, I do see what's best. Probably better than you. Well, what do you mean? Elaine, you know how much you've always meant to me. Yes, you've always been very good to me, Father. Then believe me when I tell you I know what's best for you. Tell John you will marry him right away. But why so soon? Because it is important. But your attitude has changed, so... Have you grown to like him? Oh, I've scarcely seen him. But then what's the reason for this sudden reversal of your feelings? I was looking at it before from the standpoint of an ordinary marriage with the average benefits and drawbacks. But now, my dear, we must look at it differently. I don't understand. This will be no ordinary marriage, Elaine. It will be a marriage in which you alone will benefit. I, I don't understand. Oh, my dear, I would rather do anything in the world than to tell you what I have to, but your accident, well, it left, well... Well, you're just not improving satisfactorily. What do you mean? A growth has started where I removed that clot. I've got to operate again, and I cannot say how successful I'll be. You you mean you're afraid it won't be a success? And that's why you want me to marry John? Yes, because I know what may happen if it isn't. And I want you to have all the things you want while you have the chance. But that wouldn't be fair to He's him. He's always I... said he would give up everything. Well, now he will have the chance. Oh, no. I won't do it that way. I wanted to marry him because I thought we'd have a happy life together. I don't want him to do all the giving. You've got to, Elaine. No. But you are going to need him, Elaine. Need him more than you can possibly imagine. And so that is the way things are, John. She told me how much you love her, and now's your chance to prove it. Elaine, the poor girl. It's off. Oh, there's not a thing I can do except try and prolong the final outcome. She may go on for years this way, but someday she will crack and her mind will become a complete blank. She's going to need somebody then. Somebody that loves her as much as you say you do. No, oh, there's no question about that. Of course I love her. And you will still marry her after what I've told you? Why, well, well, yes, of course. That can't make me love her any less. Then you will try and convince her that it is best that she marry you. Yes, I will. Because, you see, regardless of what you think, I do think it's best. I always have. I think so, too. Now. But don't you see, darling, this can't make any difference in my love for you. <laughs> Simply that you've got to undergo another operation. Yeah, but Father said he couldn't be certain how it would turn out. I think he's pretty certain. He told you then? Yes. And it, it doesn't really make any difference? Hmm, except that I've waited longer. And now I love you more. Oh, John. So please, darling, say your man. You still think it's wise? Yes, I know it is. All right, John. I'll marry you. When? How soon? Any time you say, John. <laughs> good to know that someone loves you enough to marry you even when you're ill, isn't it, Elaine? Only you don't know what John knows. You think you have a chance, but John knows better. The doctor told him. He loves you enough to give up anything, though. Yet he doesn't suspect what he's going to be called upon to do, and neither do you, Elaine. Neither do you. But the doctor knows. He knows what sacrifices both he and John must make for you. Oh, doctor... Doctor, can huh? I speak to you for a moment? Oh, of course. What do you want? It's about Elaine. She seems to be getting worse. She's been in a coma every time I've seen her in the last several days. Yes? It, is she really worse? Do you know what's causing the comas? I do. Well, isn't there something you can do, some way to stop them? I have something in mind. I shall have the opportunity to try it soon. And you think you can? We huh? can only hope. Oh, uh, by the way, I, I may need your help in the morning. I suggest you get a good night's rest. Well, are you going in to see her now? Yes. Then uh, may I go in with you? You're very nervous tonight. I don't think your presence would be good for her. Besides, I want you to rest. We have quite a task ahead of us in the morning. Oh, yes, but... I not... suggest you go to your room now. Over here, in this envelope are some sleeping powders. Be sure you take them. You'll need a good night's rest. Yes, but Elaine, I... If you will cooperate, I think I can assure you that Elaine will improve rather rapidly from now on. Now, please do as I say. Well, all right, then. And good night. And please let me know in the morning. I shall.
Elaine? Elaine, dear, are you awake? Elaine? Oh, oh, Father. Wake up, Elaine. I didn't realize I'd been asleep. Didn't you? No, I don't feel as though I'd been asleep exactly. Oh, don't worry about that. I want to talk to you. What about? Please, please, my dear, don't let this upset you too much, but I'm afraid we have to operate again. Oh. That is our only way out, otherwise... Otherwise, you lose your mind. My, my mind? Oh, Father. Easy, Elaine. I told you there's a way out. A way out? Yes, you see, I have known for a long time this was going to be necessary. The growth has started again, and it's spreading. And wherever it's spread, that part of your brain is dead. So I must remove that part. Oh, but I must trust you, Father. I know if any surgeon can do it, you can. I can remove it, I'm certain of that. The question is, in what condition it will leave you? Well, what do you mean? Well... Too large a part of your brain to leave you, well, entirely the same. It's the part that controls your will. We can't just remove it and leave you that way. But how? That is where John and his willingness to sacrifice for you comes in. I don't understand. I'm going to perform the same operation on John. But there's nothing wrong with John's brain. No. He has a brilliant mind. I know. That's why we chose him. We chose him? I don't understand. I told you once that you were going to need somebody that really loved you. Somebody willing to give up everything for you. And, and that's why you wanted me to marry him. Yes. You see, it was the only way to save my little girl. He seemed like a very intelligent young man. That was important because, you see, I didn't want just anybody's brain taking the place of that part of yours, which I shall remove. You mean you're going to... Yes. Oh, Father, listen to me. I love John. You, you can't do this thing to him. Oh, let me die. I don't want to live if it means this. Please, Father, listen to I'm me. I'm probably the only brain surgeon in the world who can do it, and I've prepared well. Everything is ready, including John. Father, please. Oh, you mustn't become overwrought, Elaine. Here, I'll just give you this hypodermic. There, as it will quiet you. Oh, but, Father... Don't you see, my dear, if I succeed in this, it will be just like handing back life to the little girl whom I love. But if you fail... If you fail, Father... There's no reason why you should fear any ill effects. But, John... I am perfectly confident that the operation will be a success from John's standpoint as well. But even if I do fail, it will be better than letting you live on without a mind. Father, you can't do this. You're mad. You... That's it. You're mad. Father, you're mad. You couldn't dream of such a thing if you weren't. I not only can dream of it, I'm going to do it. And when it is over, you'll be glad you had a father who was willing to do this for you. Father... Quiet, Elaine. Soon the medicine will take effect and you'll be unconscious. And when you awaken, a part of John's brain will have taken the place of that part of yours that's diseased. The operation was a success. A complete success for Elaine. A fine piece of surgery, Doctor. You must feel highly pleased with your ability. A pity this operation can't become a contribution to surgical science but I doubt that you'd want the world to know. And you, Elaine, you look so different since you've been up and around. Your will seems so strong. And your attitude toward John, what's happened to your love for him? Elaine, Elaine, what are you getting ready to do? I'm going out. You're going out again? Yes, do you mind? Well, I thought, I thought maybe you'd stay with me tonight. You, you were out last night. It's awfully lonesome just sitting here in this room. Never getting out, never seeing anyone. You're in no condition to see anyone. But I'd like to see you, Elaine. When you stay home, uh, i like to see you. Well, I'm not staying home. I'm not sitting around here spending another dull evening with you. I suppose I am dull. It's... I can't think. I had something I wanted to tell you. I remembered it this afternoon, something I intended doing. Before we were married. Oh, I can't remember what it was. Oh, you can't remember anything. All you can do is sit around and whine. Oh, why do you talk to me like that, Elaine? You used to love me. I remember you said you loved me once. And I love you, Elaine. I've always loved you. What have I done to make you stop loving me? Don't you know? But it seems like, like there was something. Something I did that concerns you, but... I don't just remember what it was. You I... really don't remember, do you? No. I wonder if you ever really knew. 
You are very smug about it, Elaine. Is that a normal way to treat a man who gave up so much for you? Oh, but you're not entirely normal anymore, are you? Maybe that's because you're no longer completely Elaine. You have parts of two minds, yours and John's, his will. You couldn't be expected to have completely normal reactions. No, not with two minds. Elaine, may I come in? Certainly. Thank you. Not at all. What do you want, Father? Elaine, I... I hardly know how to say this, but I... I've got bad news for you. About... About your trouble. Those x-ray pictures we took, they... show a return of the growth. We didn't get it all last time. Is it bad? Well, it's very small now. If we get it soon enough, we should be safe. Then... you're going to have to operate again. Yes. If we're to save your mind. And what about Elaine? What's going to happen to her? What did you say? I said... Funny, I don't remember what I said. Never mind. Do you think John will be agreeable? Oh, he's agreeable to anything I want. He doesn't seem to do anything of his own volition. Just what I wish him to do. Then you had better tell him. All right. John! John, come in here. He's been a very good husband for you, Elaine. <laughs> yes, hasn't he? Not as husbands go, perhaps, I, uh, but... You tell me to come in here, Elaine? Yes. Well, uh... John... Do you still love me? Oh, you know I love you. I always have. It... Then you can do something more for me. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, what can I do for you, man? The same thing. Again. The same thing? Well, I don't remember. I... Oh, no. No, I didn't do anything for you. You, you did something to me. Don't do it again. Not again, please. I, I can scarcely think now. I won't be able to think at all if you do. I couldn't stand it. There just won't be anything left. Oh, oh, yes, there will. There will be me. And you love me. Remember, John? <laughs> Another good job, Doctor. Another great piece of surgery. No one else could have done it. The first time, taking just the part of John's brain which controlled his will. Giving that to Elaine and making her will so strong, she cared nothing for anyone but herself. And leaving John so that he'd resist no more. That was well done. And this time, just a little bit more. Only this time you made a mistake, Doctor. This time you took too much of John's brain. This time you took the part that remembers. You took too much, Doctor. And now John is dead. You've given his will to Elaine. And now his memory. And the part of John's mind that remembers also hates Doctor. Come in. Oh, Elaine, my dear. <laughs> come in, come in, my turn. <laughs> I didn't expect you so late. I... Elaine. What are you doing with that gun? I have something to settle with you, Doctor. Doc? Why? I don't understand. You have never called me Doctor before, Elaine. It is not Elaine you are dealing with, Doctor. What? What do you mean? I... I... This is John. Jo you killed my body, but you put my mind in this body. My will and my memory. This body is Elaine's, but these thoughts are John's. That is impossible, Not right? for you, Doctor, not for the great brain surgeon. For this time you've gone too far, you and Elaine. You took my mind, only you took too much of it. And now it is no longer Elaine. It is I, John, who controls the actions of this body. And the mind of John hates you for what you did. I only did it to save my little girl. But I had only... you not objected to the marriage in the first place, nothing would ever have happened. Well, what do you mean? I remember now. Now John's thoughts remember what it was he found out about your objection to the marriage. That's what we were coming to tell you when we had the accident. John found out about your wife's will. What? The money that made it possible for you to continue your work would all go to Elaine when she married. Oh, but... Uh... You didn't want that, did you, Doctor? Because you weren't her real father. But I've always loved you as a real father. I've done everything for Excuse you. Excuse me, Doctor. For Elaine. You forget you're dealing with the memory of John. 
And with his will and his memory in this body, you can see why it's perfectly natural to kill you. Wait. Now, listen to me. For a long time, I've known that something went wrong, and I didn't intend it that way, but I have prepared for it. I have a signal bell connected with this room to the laboratory. Ernest has been instructed to come here immediately upon hearing it. Well, I was just wrong. That he'll be here in a second. You wouldn't dare to kill me because you'd be convicted as a murderer. How many times do you think a man can be afraid of death, Doctor? Oh? Remember, you've been through the process of killing my body for a long time now. I shall be easier on you. I shall kill you quickly now with this gun. What is it? I... That gun. Stop her. Good heaven. Stand back, Ernest. I have no desire to harm you. He's the only one my memory hates. The only one my will says to kill. You you killed your father. No, Ernest, I didn't. But I, I saw. I stood here and watched you kill him. Yes, but Elaine didn't pull that trigger, and he was not my father. I'll call the police. Stop. I... Stand over there in that corner. Now throw me the keys to the car. That's it. Now stay here. If you try to follow me, I'll kill you. And so you've settled scores, haven't you, John? Your mind, together with Elaine's body, have made him pay for his greed. But where are you going? It's really over. Why do you hurry so? Why do you drive so fast? Do you know where you're going? Remember, this is a crooked road. And that bridge ahead, that's where it all started, remember? The wheel. Is something pulling on it? Pulling it off to the left? Pulling harder than you can pull? What could have a hold of it? You're alone. But something is pulling the wheel around, isn't it? Pulling it until... That's really the best way. They couldn't go on with John's mind and thoughts in Elaine's body. And now they're all dead. John, William, and Elaine. John, the innocent victim. Elaine, the guilty accomplice. And William, the great brain surgeon who tried so hard to save Elaine. You think so? Well, what neither of them knew was that there was never anything wrong with Elaine's brain in the first place. Her comas were induced by medicines administered by William in his efforts to convince them that something was wrong with her. Because that way he'd have a reason for attempting his fiendish experiment in brain surgery. He was a good surgeon. He was too good. But he didn't think his transplantation of brain tissue might also carry with it the will and memory. And when a will as strong as John's combines with the memories he had, well, you could hardly blame him for killing the doctor, could you? <laughs> has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Tonight's story was written by Dwight Hauser and directed by J. Donald Wilson. The Whistler originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Next week, same time, I, the Whistler, will return to tell you another unusual tale. Good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.